T-minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. PLS is go for auto sequence start. T-minus 25 seconds. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds and the sound suppression water system has been activated. We have a go for main engine start. Three engines up and ready. Three, two, one, zero. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery. Blazing a trail to scientific discoveries aboard space station. Houston Discovery roll program. Bye to roll Discovery. This is Mission Control Houston. Space Shuttle Discovery is rolling into a heads down position, putting it on course for 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute line orbit, and eventually the International Space Station. Discovery's three liquid-fueled main engines are now throttling down to reduce stress on the shuttle as it travels through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Discovery is already at an altitude of 4.7 miles or 26,500 feet and traveling. Discovery, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Traveling 1,000 miles per hour, Discovery's engines are now throttled back up and performing at full ca capability. At liftoff, the shuttle weighed more than 4.5 million pounds, and now uh, 1 minute and 27 seconds into the flight, the main engines and solid rocket boosters have reduced that weight by about half. Solid rocket, bo rocket boosters alone are burning, burning 11,000 pounds of propellant per second, and the external tank is now 3,000 pounds lighter than when it began. Discovery is now 21 miles away from its launch pad and uh, 22 miles in altitude, traveling 2,700 miles per hour. All three main engines are working just as expected. The three fuel cells are generating power, and the three auxiliary power units are all producing pressure. In short, everything performing well. Two minutes and seven seconds into the STS-131 mission. The booster officer in the mission control center has confirmed the solid rocket booster separation. All systems continuing to, continuing to function well. Two orbital maneuvering system engines on Discovery's tail are now firing as well, providing the shuttle an extra boost into orbit. The engine burn will last one minute and 44 seconds. Discovery, two engine tail. Discovery copies, two engine tail. That call indicates that Discovery can now reach Moron in Spain should one of the three main engines fail. However, all three of those main engines are currently working well. Two minutes and 59 seconds into the flight, and Discovery is now 79 miles away from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, 48 miles in altitude, and traveling at 4,500 miles per hour. Space Shuttle Discovery also seeing the first of many sunrises of the STS-131 mission. Discovery Houston, you are negative return. Discovery copies, negative return. Discovery is now flying too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine fail failure. That's not currently a problem, however, as all engines are continuing to perform as expected. Four minutes and 15 seconds into Discovery's flight, 
Shuttles traveling 6,000 miles per hour at an altitude of 63 miles and uh, is 181 miles away from Kennedy Space Center. Environmental Systems Officer here in Mission Controls confirmed that the flash evaporator system has been activated to provide cooling to the shuttle system until the shuttle's cargo bay doors open and uh, double as radiators. Discovery, press to ATO. Discovery copies, press to ATO. Should two of the shuttle's three main engines fail after this point, it can still reach a safe, though lower than planned orbit, as that call from Capcom Rick Sterko indicated. Discovery is now five minutes and 42 minutes Discovery, seconds into its flight. Ops three. Discovery, single engine Ops 3. 67 miles in altitude and 351 miles away from Kennedy Space Center. Discovery could still make it across the Atlantic for an abort landing, even if two of the three, three main engines failed at this point. All engines are performing well. Discovery, single engine, Zaragoza. Discovery, copy, single engine, Zaragoza. Discovery now flying more than 10,000 miles per hour. 66 miles in altitude and 430 miles away from Kennedy Space Center. Discovery, press to Miko. Discovery copies, press to Miko. And that call indicates that Discovery can reach its planned orbit of 136 by 36 statute miles, even if one of the engines fails. All three engines are still working well, as are the auxiliary power units and the three fuel cells. Discovery, you are single engine press. Your shutdown plan is nominal. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch maneuver. Copy, nominal shutdown plan. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Even if two engines were to fail at this point, Discovery could still make its planned orbit with just one. That shouldn't be necessary, however, as all three engines are still performing at full capability. Also, Capcom Rick Starkow there letting Commander Alan Poindexter know that Discovery will cut off its three main engines as planned and that he has the go-ahead then to pitch Discovery up to allow for photos of the external tank to be taken after its external, after its separation. Discovery now 7 minutes and 48 seconds into its uh, mission, traveling at 15,000 miles per hour. 63 miles in altitude and 730 miles downrange from Kennedy Space Center. Booster officer here in Mission Control is reporting that Discovery's three main engines have been shut off. We're now waiting for external tank separation. Discovery Houston, nominal MECO, OMS-1 is not required. Nominal MECO, OMS-1 not required. And there is the external tank separation. Eight minutes and 53 seconds into the STS-130 mission. Discovery now safely in orbit. 66 miles above the Earth, and traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. Also uh, 1,065 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center.